Salud. So, I still kind of want to unload, if you will, some information on uh, dreams. As many of you guys know, who have been following my discussions over the past four years on YouTube, I've been talking about dreams recently. And I don't know, I think it's just ridiculously important. Why? Well, that's what I kind of want to get into in this discussion. And as always, please, I'm no authority on dreams. I'm only going by my own anecdotal experiences. This, no, I'm not talking about, well, I guess I will discuss a little bit of empirical uh, evidence, evidence about dreams, but really I'm just relying on my own experiences, my own nightly experiences over the past several years. But as far as I can remember, I've been lucid dreaming. A lucid dream is essentially uh, when you realize that you're dreaming and you're able to control the dream to a large extent. The extent in which you believe you can do certain things. So if you believe you can fly, you're going to fly. If you believe you can walk through walls, you're going to walk through walls. But uh, I guess let's talk about something that I haven't really been speaking about in videos. What are some of the practical applications of dreaming? Practical, practical, utility, utilitarian, a means to an end. Well, that's sort of a difficult discussion for me because when I dream, I'm usually not trying to dream for any ends. I'm usually not trying to dream for any practical understanding or practical implementation of something in my daily life, even though that's a result of many dreams that I have. Modern science has, especially over the past 10 years, has been analyzing dreams in a way where the lucid dream can become a sort of training environment in where one example would be uh, people are learning how to ski better or play better video games through first playing the game and then a dream scientist will say well during your dream tonight I want you to visualize you playing that game so some of these people who are able to have lucid dreams will visualize that scenario in their dream and start playing that game and then the next day and over the course of the following week or two weeks or months what have you the scientist will see a marked improvement in that person's performance because in that dream environment, they were actually playing the game. They were gaining more insights on how to become a better player. They were learning the, the levels better. They were learning the other components of the game better through their, simply through dreaming. So in that respect, dreaming has immense, immense practical implications of helping you to improve some sort of a motor skill or some sort of create creative outlet. Scientists have also done experiments or where they uh, spoke to mathematicians or physicists where they had these immense problems, mathematical problems, uh, problems in physics, architecture. And they would bring those same problems into a sort of incubation period in their dreams. But they would think about it, think about it, and try to conjure up the same problem in the dream. And over a course of time, they would be able to start to get a hold or to grasp that problem better simply from dreaming about it. So in that respect, dreaming has immense implications in being able to improve your daily life in any task that you're doing. Now, it also has metaphysical, I don't want to say implications, that sounds almost oxymoronic. Metaphysical implications? No. What does that mean? Uh, you know? A dream scientist, most dream scientists will say, okay, well, everything that happens in a dream is a projection. It's not real. It's just a projection of your subconscious, and these things are just 
mere uh, manifestations of, 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 of memory. So it's not real. Don't pay any attention to it. I can't agree fully with, with the science on that. I mean, I've had some dreams, which I would like to call visitations. Now, science doesn't really account for these visitations. They don't really put it into their math. They don't really put it into their, into their uh, equation. The visitation just breaks the equation. It breaks the utilitarian equation. What do I mean by visitation? Well, you know, I've had people who've died in my life, friends, family members, and many times these people will come to me in a dream, usually within weeks or days of their death, and I'll have a simple conversation with them, a real conversation, saying, oh, Dave, you know, don't worry, I'm okay, uh, live your life, you know, things along these lines. And for me, that's not just a projection. A scientist will say, well, that's just a way of your uh, subconscious dealing with the problem. So your subconscious is dealing with this pain. So it's going to project your dead grandmother, it's going to project your dead friend, and it's going to allow you to interface with that person and to become at ease or to create a, a scenario of resolution with that person. It's still not real, the scientists will say. They're saying it's just your subconscious. There is no visitation. Once you're dead, you're dead. But I cannot, I cannot, I cannot accept that. I can't accept that. For me, that visitation is a visitation. It is real. I really spoke to that, let's call it entity. Let's call it energy. Call it what you will. But I, I believe that I really, truly spoke with that energy. It wasn't just a projection out of my mind. So that's what makes it so difficult. You have this juxtaposition of dreams. On one camp you say, the scientists, some scientists, most scientists will say, well, it's all bullshit. It's all manifestation. It's all part of the REM cycle. REM is a rapid eye movement. When your brain is in REM and your eyes are moving and flickering around, that's when you're dreaming. That's pretty much accounts for 99% of the time you're dreaming. Uh, and these are just projections, as scientists will say. But then you have, you know, books like the Tibetan Book of the Dead or Dreaming Yoga. These books dating back for thousands of years where they're talking about dreaming as a real, real metaphysical experience. It's real as it gets. When you dream, you create the dream body that Tibetans will talk about. And during this time, it is of essential importance for you to become lucid. When you become lucid, you take control of your consciousness and you're able to continue to study, continue to, to interface with the masters. You're able to summon entities. You're able to summon people outside of their physical bodies. But what's really interesting, as you continue to study the science, you know, the pragmatic, empirical science, and you continue to also study, you know, the yoga, dream yoga, astral projection, out-of-body experiences, uh, all these sort of metaphysical aspects of dream, you realize that they're really the same thing. You just have two different types of minds speaking about it, in different ways. The scientists will express the dream in a pragmatic, you know, numbers, REM sleep, uh, stage one, stage two, uh, theta uh, cycle, uh, slow wave sleep cycle, REM cycle. These are the five different cycles of sleep that you go in and out of throughout the night. You're not just having one dream every night. You're literally having several dreams, maybe 10 to 20, perhaps even 30 dreams per night. You're never just having one dream. That's the science. And then you have the metaphysics, where the dream is you. The dream is a world that's just as real as this world. And the idea is to remain constantly awake in this world and the other world. And when you die, physically die, you will go into a dream state situation and that situation will be highly dependent on the training you did while you were in that, while you were in this physical body. 
That's what the Tibetan Book of the Dead talks about. How do I die? How does one properly die? Are you prepared to die? Are you going to be in a nightmare situation, a nightmare sequence, because you weren't ready to die, and you thought you were still alive, so when you look at your dead body on the ground, are you going to freak out? And if you freak out, are you going to create a nightmare situation where you cannot get out of until you realize that you are not your physical body? So, let's sort of backtrack here. YouTube has allowed me to, finally, thank God, has allowed me to begin recording again over 15 minutes. They banned me from doing that uh, about a year ago, probably because I was playing some music. So maybe let me lower the music. So I'm able to talk for over 15 minutes, so I think we have time to cover some things. So, here we go. Astral projection. Let's talk about different sorts of, of, of dreaming scenarios. So, we have astral projection. Astral projection is essentially when you're able to put your physical body to sleep. And when you put your physical body to sleep, your body goes into something called the hypnagogic state. Many of us have experienced this state. Did you ever go to sleep and then you wake up and you can't move, you're immobilized, but your mind is totally active? This is called the hypnagogic state. Your body goes into this every single night to prevent you from physically carrying out your dreams. If your body didn't have this built-in mechanism, you would literally be jumping out of the window every single night. Well, you, you would only do it one night because you'd be dead after that. So your body immobilizes you. The most movement that you could do at night is like this, just move around just a little bit or move your eyes. That's it. You can't move. Now, when you astral project or when one begins to astral project, they go into this hypnagogic state. Whether you did it intentionally or unintentionally, I don't know. You could learn how to go into it if you're uh, uh, adept at that. That's another story. So, once you're in this hypnagogic state, you can literally now project your, uh, what I'll call your dream body, outside of your physical body. Some people roll out of it, some people fall through the bed, some people begin to float up outside of their physical body, and they turn around and they see their physical body. And then from there, they're in what we call, for lack of a better word, real-time zone where you're in your room still, everything looks pretty much the same, but it's an energetic copy of your physical room. So things may look a little differently, but it's more or less the same. And you, you may see your physical body sleeping. You may see other things in the room. You may see scary things, great things. It depends on the person, it depends on what's happening. You may project your fears and you may manifest some monster like... Uh, monster crazy animals that scare you and like ah that's possible that's happened to me or some people who are able to control themselves and to say okay I'm okay I'm okay I'm breathing let me fly out the window now let me go visit my friend what have you that's essentially what astral projection is you project your consciousness outside of your physical body it's not necessarily a lucid dream now, a lucid dream is when you went to sleep, your body is sleeping, and you're in a dream, and then you notice something that's a little weird. You finally begin to question your state. So you say, wow, well, my shoes are black, but why are they blue? Something's weird. What, what the fuck is going on here? So you realize what you call a dream sign or some sort of dream trigger. You notice that, and then you say, okay, wow, I'm dreaming. Wow, holy shit, I'm dreaming. Oh my God, this is amazing, this is incredible, I'm dreaming, I could go have sex, I could go fly, I could go smoke some crazy weed, I could go drink mate, I could do whatever I want to do, pretty much. Most people, when that happens, they get too excited, and they start, the dream starts to deteriorate. It's like Inception, the movie Inception, the dream literally begins to break down, their vision becomes whitewashed, and they wake up because they were too excited. 
They were amateurs. And I don't mean that in a negative sense, like, oh, they were amateurs. I mean, they were literally amateurs. Literally. They were novice, novices. So the idea is, to, get a, to go a little deeper into this situation, the idea is to notice that you're dreaming. And how do you notice that you're dreaming? You test your state constantly when you're in this physical waking life. Like right now, I'm testing if I'm in a dream. I'm not really in a dream. We'll go into this more a little bit later, but yes, I'm, I am in a dream right now as well. But keep that to the side. I'm not in a dream. Okay, so what happens is when you're really dreaming, you begin to say the same neural nets, the same connections that you created, the same memory is triggered, and you say, well, am I in a dream? Well, let me test it. So I jump up and down, and I begin to float. I'm like, okay, well, I'm floating, so this must be a dream. And then you do more tests. You start to move things with your mind. You start to... You know, manifest things, lasers, whatever, what have you. And from that point, it's very, very important to remain calm, to breathe, to breathe. Okay, I'm dreaming. Yes, remain calm. Do not freak out. Breathe, breathe. What I like to do nowadays is do jumping jacks. You want to spark your perception. You want to spark your, your perceptional functions of your body. You literally want to try to exercise your nervous system. Yes, your nervous system doesn't really exist in that state, but you want to pretend that it does and do things like feel your hands, look at your hands, pretend that you have a physical body. This will help you stay in the dream. This will help you say, okay, okay, I'm a physical body still, okay, I'm okay, I'm dreaming, let me manifest this physical body, let me do jumping jacks, let me do things that I would do in the physical world. But stay calm. That's how you prolong your state in the, phys in the, in the, in the lucid dream. In this state, you can work on problems. Now we go back into the whole practical implications of dreams. You can work on problems, you could say, okay, well I'm trying to start a company on Mate, let me figure out how to do this while I'm in the dream. Let me ask people. Let me do some meditation. Let me fly to the moon. Let me figure out this math problem. Let me work on myself. Let me heal. I have a cut on my finger. So now let me send light. Let me send good energy to this cut. What's happening in that state, and this is more of a, a, different, con a different concept, but you're literally, you're able to heal yourself. Science is beginning to prove this. You could heal yourself in dreams. If you start to think about that cut you have on your finger, you're literally sending impulses back to your physical body, which, to some degree, you're, you're, you're sparking and initiating growth or cell uh, rejuvenation in that particular part of your body. I don't want to go too deep into that, but you could help heal yourself in dreams. This one could actually heal himself from cancer in his dreams. That's another story. So... To backtrack, astral projection, lucid dreams. Now let's talk about non-lucid dreams. A non-lucid dream is a dream which you think is real, but you don't know you're dreaming. You think it's just everyday life. So you see monsters, you see people with three, four different eyes, you see your dead relatives, but you don't think. You don't think that it's weird. You're totally mindless. You're just like, oh, okay, everything's normal. This is very dangerous. This is what you want to transcend. You do not want to go to sleep every night and have these non-lucid dreams. Very, it shows a sign of great uh, mindlessness. You're not mindful. It shows that in your waking life, you are going about on zombie mode for most of the day. This is a great indication, and I mean no disrespect when I'm saying this. I mean no disrespect. But if you're not having lucid dreams, and if you're not remembering your dreams, it shows that you, you have a lot of work to do. It means that you're just, you're just blanking out at night, and you're thinking that everything is real. All these projections are real. So you want to start to lucid dream. So that's what a non-lucid dream is. It's just a regular thing where you think that everything's okay, no matter how weird it becomes. Checking my time here. Okay, so now this is what I kind of want to wrap this whole thing up with. This is the thing that you want to understand with dreams. Everything is a dream. I'm dreaming right now. As I'm speaking to you, I am in a dream. I am in a dream 
to the extent in which I realize I initiate lucidity in this life, in this physical body. I can realize a lucid dream. So the idea is to constantly be lucid dreaming. This is the ideal of the dream. This is the real ideal of what I'm talking about here. To remain lucid, to remain lucid while you're sleeping and to remain lucid while you're awake. Because there is no astral projection, really, this word. There is no lucid dreaming. There is no non-lucid dreaming. There is no, uh, you know, projection of my spirit outside of my body. There is no dream body. These things are all illusions and they're all concepts. There's only one and it's only you. It's only one. It's just you. There is no division between the dream body, the ethereal body, the astral body, uh, lucid dream, uh, stages of lucid dreams, level of lucid dreams. No, that's all these delineations that we as people, members of society, uh, have created to try to explain this situation. But none of that shit really exists. That's just books. That's just literature. That's just science. That's just yogis coming up with different ways to explain things. The idea is to remain lucid. So that's really what dreaming is all about, for me at least. Dreaming shows you how powerful that you are. It shows you, it gives you an opportunity to use that 1,000% of your brain, that 10,000% of your brain. It shows you that you are not even your brain. It shows you how powerful you are when you fly out the window. It shows you how powerful you are when you're able to move objects with your mind. It shows you how powerful you are when you're able to manifest guns if, if you want, or manifest uh, love, or manifest uh, anything. The dream is a testament to your true, to your trueness, to how true you are, to how powerful you are. So as you begin to lose your dream, don't think of it as some sort of frivolous game. You know, you want to get beyond the whole flying around and, you know, having sex with everybody. These are all base elements, low elements. What you really want to do is just simply understand that you're dreaming. That's enough. Understand that you're dreaming. Understand that you're dreaming. Understand that you could become lucid in a dream and do the same thing while you're awake now. So right now, I want to be as lucid as I could be. I want to say, yes, I'm alive. I feel... I love, I, I am capable, I don't need to get pissed off at this, I don't need to get angry at that. I can change the situation just as easily as I could change it in the lucid dream. Does that make sense? So I'm not sure where I really went with that. I guess I just want to kind of unload, unload some, uh, experiences that I've been playing with, that I've been dealing with, with, with dreaming. Uh, you know, a lot of people are, are still really interested in what I have to say about dreams, so I'm going to continue to discuss it. But, yeah, the idea is just to remain lucid 24-7. There's not much more I could really go deeper into that at this point. Remain lucid. Remain lucid. Uh... And as I said, there's so many practical applications of it as well, you know, creativity, problem solving, relationships, healing your body, uh, figuring out many unknown things that we may not be able to realize now uh, because our minds are cluttered with so much nonsense going on in our day-to-day -day mundane routine riddled lives. So I hope that you guys continue to explore your dreams. I hope that you learn how to become lucid. And as much as you're studying about these various aspects of lucid dreaming and astral projection, OBEs, different types of sleep, REM sleep, I hope that you understand that these delineations or definitions are nothing more than pigeonholes. You are you. If you were to die today, you would still be you. You were you before you were born, before you came into this physical body. You were you 10 million years ago, just as you are you 10 million years in the future. And the lucid dream is a testament to that, that, that you cannot die. You, it's impossible. You cannot die. You are not your physical body. 
You are not what psychiatrists or psychologists will call your self-image. This is one of the things that you must, you must, you must get beyond the self-image. The self-image is what you think you are right now. So, okay, well, I feel that I'm here right now because my nervous system is telling me that my ass feels the chair. So, I've, I've, obviously, I must be here right now in Argentina sitting on this chair. And I feel that I must be uh, angry because I have this sensation in my brain right now that's releasing these certain chemical signatures that tell me when I feel angry. So, I must be angry right now. But who is that I that must be angry? Who? Who's that I that must be angry? Where's that I come from? Or who is that I that must not talk to this person because this person did something wrong to me? You know, who is that I that must uh, get back at my ex-girlfriend because she kissed some dude 10 years ago and I'm still pissed at her? Who is that I that makes me wake up every day and feel pissed off at her? We have to get beyond this whole, you know, this voice in our head that, that, that defines us, that, 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 that says, well, I, I'm bad at math. I'm horrible at math. So it's, when I say I'm horrible at math, it's, it's like this self-fulfilling prophecy that when every time I take a math test, I don't expect to do well because I'm saying to myself, well, I'm bad at math. I just don't have a mathematical mind. I'm bad at math. So it's like it's a self-perpetuating, vicious cycle of this self-image of me saying, well, I'm bad at math. I'm bad at math. So of course you're going to be bad at math. Because you told yourself you're bad at math all day long. So you created that model, that model. We have to get beyond these models. We have to get beyond, I'm angry, I'm happy, I'm in love, I'm rich, I'm black, I'm white, I'm upset, I'm, uh, uh, I'm a bad person because I did this, or I'm angry, or I can't forgive myself, or this person shouldn't forgive me because I've done so many bad things. This is all the self-image. You're creating a falsehood around this physical organism. You think that this physical organism is you. You know, we think that the spirit is inside of the body, but we have it all wrong. You know, the body, the body is inside of the spirit. The body is inside of the spirit. The spirit is not inside of the body. You are everywhere that 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 you are infinite. You are not just here. I'm not in Argentina. Yes, my physical body is, and there's an aspect of me which is here. But I could also be in India. I could also be in Africa. I'm also in 1922. I'm also in 2050. This whole concept of time and location is a very human thing. It's a very societal, you know, fabricated thing. We have to get beyond all that. And it sounds like I'm talking like a crazy man. I know. I'm aware that this concept or, or this reality is something that is not to be accepted because it makes no real sense. But that's my whole point. What I'm talking about has nothing to do with sense, has nothing to do with logic, has nothing to do with uh, utility, utilitarianism, cause and effect, you know, karma, dharma, samsara. It has nothing to do with all these things. You just have to get rid of and accept that you are not the voice inside of your head. You are not what you think you are. You just are. That's the best way I could explain it. You just are. And things are what they are. And you must live that in every single fucking moment. Now, 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 now. There is no mind, memory. You know, don't live in the memory, the mind, the past, or don't live in the future. And this sounds almost like a cliche now, because you've heard it in all the self-help books, you've heard it from all the masters. But it's real. Just now. Now is the only time that exists. Salud. That was a long one, guys. Thanks for bearing with me. If you guys watched this whole thing, holy shit. 30 minutes, thank you. I appreciate that. Namaste. Ciao, guys.